Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Mad Capper and this is another video on Raid Shadow Legends. First of all, no matter what you celebrate this time of year, I hope it was a successful and otherwise great Christmas season or holiday season for you. I know it's not the best of times, given with COVID, all the social distancing rules, but I hope you made the most of it. I know I had an amazing time. I spent time with two very close personal friends and we had a really good time just kind of laying back, having some drinks, having a great turkey dinner. Uh, they're they're my, my bubble, <laughs> if, if anything, because I can't go back home to visit my family. And these two, they're a couple, they live together. They invited me over, so I'm the plus, I'm their plus one. And man, uh, I'm really thankful for them. I'm really thankful that I was able to, to spend some time with them. They don't know that I do this, but in case they somehow accidentally stumble onto it, Ange and uh, Mark, I really appreciate you guys. And I appreciate being able to spend Christmas, especially this year. So being able to spend it with people that you care about is, is always a, a big thing for me. And being able to do it this year with you guys was awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, but let's get on to the video. The video is I built them so you don't have to. And today we're going to talk about Alika. But I need to have a little conversation with you guys first about the last video. There were some divided Lich fans out there. Not fans, but I would say they don't believe that Lich is the worst champion ever. And I do understand he does have that 100% turn meter reduction, which is great for Fire Knight. But here's the thing. This is why I did rank him as low as I did. Even though he has that ability, is because then what? So he doesn't have a multi-hit. So he's not really good in the Fire Knight until you get your other champions to do what they need to do. And then basically the only thing he's good for is for reducing that turn meter and then he sits there like a bump on a log well rather than putting the resources in that on an epic in undead which is one of the most uh well-rounded factions in the game if not the most well-rounded faction in the game uh why don't you just build two armagers build an armager and a cold heart if you get a cold heart rare void and a rare uh spirit of or an uncommon sorry spirit affinity champion that's what that's what irks me about uh lich why i think he's the worst champion in the game because his one ability is out there and it's common amongst you know armagers you can get from the market like and it's a better champion it's strong affinity to the to the dungeon he's going to do enemy max hp as well as doing an a1 with turn meter reduction which means he's really good in counter attack uh or, or the kind of the old style the pre allure plus once you open that he can do that thing where he's going to reduce their turn meter so that's why i did that that said i listened to you guys and one of the champions that a lot of you said is no no first of all you said tashada you said Wode Painted. Weirdly enough, I've used them as food. I don't have Tishada, unless I missed her. If I did, I apologize and I'll build her next. Uh, I don't see her here. Tell me if you see her and I don't. Say stop. Say when. You didn't say when. I didn't hear you. There's no Tishada and there's no way Wode Painted here. So I gotta pull them again. Once I pull them again, I will build them out because, hey, we're here to find the best and the worst. So uh, challenge accepted. But there is one champion you guys mentioned that I do have. And so I'm in the midst. You're welcome. Exemplar was a often mentioned name in the worst champion in the game. So here we go. Uh, calling you out. Calling your bluff. And she's uh, on her way. So you're going to see her at some point in the next week. Uh, we're going to get Exemplar out there for a video. But today is about Alika. So why don't we just take a look at her kit. First thing to note with Alika is that when you bring yourself into the Barbarians, there are some notable Heavy hitting champions. Turvold, uh, Altan hits really hard as a defense based champion. You can kind of get uh, Sill and Cantra to hit okay. Uh, and then there's a couple of attack champions. Jo Jotun got a, um, or Jotun got a really good facelift on his kit. So he probably hits harder. I haven't tried him out yet since the, the changes. Not a fan of a tour. Um, not a fan of Kalia. That's who I use, right, or you have been using on my faction wars. But there's not a lot of options here. Maeve hits pretty hard, I heard. Uh, Aina and uh, Suai, not a fan of. I don't think, I, I just don't like them. So it does kind of leave you with not the best attack champions. And while my my runs have always been 100% for a long time in Faction Wars, since before, for two nerfs ago, uh, but it was slow, it was five, six minutes. So I think for that, in that perspective, having this attack based champion building her out is really healthy for those of you who have the resources to do so. So that's that's one good immediate bonus that she's an attack based champion amongst a bunch of defensive based. So very good to have as part of your uh, as part of your your makeup of your team that's going to go through the go through the faction wars twenty farm it for glyphs that sort of thing. 
As far as our kit here, you have 8, 15, 855 HP, pretty good HP. Attack 1354, reasonable. Defense 892, meh, whatever. Speed 101, great. Anytime you're north of 100 is an epic, awesome. Um, and then of course the rest is normal. She has a Force Affinity Champion too, so she's at epic Force Affinity. Very good against, of course, Magic Affinity uh, enemies. So keep that in mind. A uh, lot of Magic Affinity enemies out there. It's starting to balance out a little bit, but I'm still pretty sure we're heavy in the Magic world, especially in the early game. Most of the early game champions you get are Magic, so it's a, it's a good counter just in of itself. Uh, as far as our kit here, you have Disorient, which is a four-turn bookable to three-turn, 75% chance bookable to 100% chance to increase the cooldowns of all enemy skills by one turn. Amazing ability. Uh, A2, attacks one enemy, ignores 50% of the target's defense if their max HP is higher than this champion's max HP. Really good in arena. Amazing in dungeons and against dungeon bosses because you know that they're going to have higher HP, especially Doom Tower. Haven't really used her in the Doom Tower, but I think that there's some... There's something to be said about that, and I think maybe my next run through, or, or I'm on normal right now, I've already finished hard, maybe I'll try her out in some of the higher levels there, see if she can uh, hold up in those kind of high levels. And then her A1 attacks one enemy, has a 30% chance of placing an extra hit. This hit is always critical. Um, I don't want to talk about it, I'll talk about that, that at the end. Uh, I, might, I don't want to get triggered before we start. So there is her kit. Um, and let's take her into some dungeons and see what she can do. So let's take a look at how I built Alika. Uh, I have her in decent gear, pretty decent gear, honestly. A good attack gear, probably not the best on crit damage, but uh, overall, very good build, I think. Uh, she's been hitting, she's been smacking. Uh, 4,400, just shy of 4,400 attack at 38,000 HP. Uh, 201 speed, got over that 200 mark, which I always like. I would like it to be around 210, to be honest. And probably around 230 for the arena to, to be synced in a little better with my team. 221 crit damage is a little low, but still pretty good. And as, as you'll see when we do the, the actual uh, test, she, she, it, it's good. She good enough. He's good enough. Uh, 317 accuracy. I do like having the extra accuracy on her. And we use perception gear on her. We didn't have to, but I do like the fact those cooldowns, that's going to be a pain in the butt to the enemy team. So anytime you can you can create that bit of havoc or whatever against an enemy with uh, increasing their cooldowns is always a good thing. Um, yeah, so that's how I have her built. <laughs> I had a, sorry, I had a moment. Uh, as far as her masteries go, uh, we took her to we took her to the Helm Smasher. We want that Helm Smasher. For that A3, we want that Helm Smasher to get the extra ignore defense on that A2. And she's a multi-hit A1 potentially. So again, I, I don't see what reason you wouldn't go this way. You could go Flawless Execution to get that 250 crit uh, damage instead. But I just feel like because she's got an AoE and a multi-hit and she's got an ignore defense, you put that all together and you just you want, you want that Helm Smasher. Unless you're trying to use her in the clan boss or that sort of scenario where you're just trying to get that extra damage. In which case, obviously, you go with Warmaster. Um, maybe you could argue Doom Tower. Maybe Warmaster is the way to go because then you can get those procs on that AoE if you're having some trouble getting through waves in the higher, higher levels of hard. I haven't used her in the Doom Tower. I, I don't see... I mean, any nuker could be potentially useful for you as long as you can keep him alive. And she's no different. Uh, and then I took it on the support side just to get that extra. I want that extra accuracy. I always this is probably the best a uh, single target skill in the game. Um, if you if you don't have an AOE A1, especially that 20% turn meter reduction is is huge. It's huge in the Fire Knight. It's huge in Arena. So, and then I did go with Laura Steel because I do like getting those extra bonuses where I can. So that's how I built her out. Uh, time to take her on a test drive. So I'm gonna disappear, first place, campaign. Always good to see her in the campaign. Anytime you have a force affinity champion, do not take them to 12-3. There's too many uh, spirit affinity, but we take them to 12-6. A little bit less silver, a little bit more XP. We're gonna put her uh, solo here. You'll get the idea though. She actually is pretty good in this. So uh, in the campaign, she, she gonna hit. Right there, boom, she got the weak hit on the Lord Chazar, no big deal, she finishes them off. Right, there's a few, lot, a lot less uh, spirit affinity champions, which makes this a little bit easier for her to get through. Boom. So you know, 16 seconds. It's not blazing fast, obviously. 
Uh, but if you're looking to level her up or you don't have a nuking champion that you can use to farm with, she's going to do the job for you pretty good. I wouldn't complain about it. I love testing champions in Dragon, especially Force Affinity champions. So let's bring her in here. My reference is always Ethos, and I do like having that comparison to see what she can do. We can bring in Rotos. Uh, so we've got an AoE, so we can compare AoEs, we can compare single targets, uh, and then we have a couple supports just to allow this to happen. So let's start it up. First test, uh, we're gonna go down to one times, not on auto. So we'll get the debuff up. Good. Uh, we'll just reduce turn meter here. So yeah, so she's going first here. Her A3. So we want to compare her A3. We want to watch these two because we're going to do A3 versus A3. It's AOE versus AOE. Uh, so 49, 46, 53. But on the on the the bombardier it was. Uh, 49 so you know in that 50 under 50 but close to 50 not going to be as hard hitting but keep in mind they just lost all their cooldowns all their skills are on cooldown all they have is their a1s now now if we use ethos boom he's hitting for 73 72 70 so yeah so 50 to 70 40 percent greater damage with ethos keep in mind ethos is in savage gear so he's getting a 25 percent ignore damage or ignore defense right away so let's go back in there again. We're gonna we're gonna test a twos now, and then we'll get that's what we'll get Rotos in on that one. So again, we'll debuff, hoping it lands. And here's here's the real here's the real guess. So she's ignoring 50% of the target's defense if their max HP is higher than hers, which it is. So let's hit. And yeah, just hit for 128,000 in comparison. We'll have to watch over here to get the three hits on his A2. It is an AOE, keep in mind, of course. But what are you looking for, 60 to 70,000? He's in that just over 20K. So yeah, <laughs> obviously he's AOE, so it's a better skill. But for an epic force versus a void legendary, just to give you that reference of damage, that she hits hard now uh we'll do his which is ignoring 60 percent of defense and 87,000. he's in pretty good gear too we'll compare gear well I'll, i can show you their gears in a bit just so we have a, a reference point but you've already seen her gear you know she's not she's not at crazy levels of crit damage and stuff so i'm uh, actually really impressed we don't get to see his a2 against the bomb bombardier but that bombardier i keep wanting to call him bombardier i don't know why bombardier um even his even his A2 against the Horde, another pretty low defense attack based champion, uh, hit for 90. So that should give you some kind of uh, reference as to how hard she's hitting. She's hitting really hard with that A2. All right, as a little added bonus to this, we're gonna bring in two of the hardest hitting epic champions I've built, uh, Knight Errant and Faceless. Faceless is gonna hit for less, but he's ignoring defense. Uh, so he's gonna hit that no matter who he's hitting. If he's hitting Tyrell, if he's hitting Rosin, uh, if he's hitting anyway, Void Affinity, so no weak hit. So this is kind of, we'll get that good reference. And then here's Knight Errant. Uh, lower attack, he's at 3692, 233 crit damage, but he's kind of got that A3 where if he's at full HP, it's the hardest hitting uh, hit in the game. So we're gonna bring those two in. We're gonna do the same test as we just did, and we'll see, we'll see, who, <laughs> we'll see what she, what her damage is in comparison. Um, and of course, just as a reminder, we should take a look at the leak again. Uh, she's sitting at uh, 43.91, 44, and, and a 2.21 crit damage. Uh, These are the two big stats that we're looking at here as far as hard hitting. So she's better looking than the other two. Just saying. Uh, okay, so here we go. Get into the dragon. We're going to debuff. Uh, boom. And then we're going to bring that uh, turn meter reduction. Uh, I don't even know why. I thought he's in there, but whatever. Okay, so here it is. Long, as long as it doesn't weak hit. Okay, didn't weak hit 110. Keep in mind, he's not getting any bonuses because it's a, actually weak affinity, but he didn't weak hit. So we got the full measure of his damage. 110, uh, full measure of her damage. Obviously, the strong hit, 137. So she's going to have higher potential in this because of the affinities. So I would say that's pr probably a push if they had identical gear, gear and a neutral one. And then 51. Wow. That's his, uh, that's his A2. Uh, his A3 doesn't hit much more. I think we loop around and we see his A3. Not very, not very big. 
Uh, apologies, I edited out. <laughs> I edited out his A3. Uh, Faces A3 hit for 60, and his A2 hit for 50. So not a whole lot of damage there. I, I expected it to be higher, to be honest with you. But uh, I guess keeping in mind that it ignores 100% defense. But there you go. Uh, I will call it a knight errant push with Alika. Keeping in mind, Alika's on a two-turn cooldown, and she doesn't need to uh, be full HP. Whereas his is hitting that level with. Only when he has full HP, that extra 70% damage, and it's on a way higher five turn cooldown. So keep that in mind. So let's now uh, we'll take a minute. We're gonna take her into the Fire Knight and see what she can do over here. So I know a lot of the times when we do these videos, they say, "Oh well, of course they look good." You look at the champions you're using. So here we go. We're using two rares, three epics, uh, no void affinity epics, Stagnite. You might have him if you had the battle pass, Allure. And of course, Alika, who we're featuring. So there's every reason to believe that you should be able to have this. Uh, we run them in the Fire Knight, and we'll see what they can do. Um, it's not going to be a super fast run, but this is just the, the point being: is, is Alika going to be able to help you in this sort of thing? And and to that, I say yes, definitely she will be able to. And you just got to bring the right group of team in there. Yet yeah, she's going to take some hits, but that's why we bring in the heals, uh, so she can stay and survive. Little bit, not gonna lie to you, a little bit worried about what we're gonna see on the on the shield. But pretty easy first round, nothing too concerned about. It's also a big shout out to everyone who talked about Lich. Well, there he is on the other side. Not that worried about him. I also, by the way, do have a stun set on my um, Stagnite, so you're gonna see a couple stuns there, which will be very nice. But I mean, yeah, like, no worries. Nice and easy. Yeah, it's not a 20 second to the boss run, but I don't know, no one's ever really in danger. With a weak affinity lead, no less. Okay, here's where, so there's a two, a one. Ugh, the two is a little sucky, that's three. He should, yeah, oh, good. Relentless gear wins. Okay, we need her to reduce. Perfect. I'm not gonna lie, a little bit scared here. There we go. Oh, okay, there we go. Lands the triple. It's been so long since I've done. Lissandra's so clutch at this. That's. It's been a while since I've used this this setup. But uh, yeah, um, it's actually not gonna be an awful run. I mean, to be honest, it, it's probably gonna be two and a half minutes. For 10 months of the game, I would have murdered someone for that kind of speed uh, in this dungeon. So, yeah, I, I think I think it's a pretty good show. She's hit, she hits really hard. So that A2 hits really hard. That hits harder than um, than my ethos. My ethos hits probably 80k on that. So, yeah, two, two minutes, four seconds. Uh, all right, so uh, in the arena now. Sorry, I started and then realized I forgot to hit record. Uh, so here we are, we're going real slow. Lysander's already gone. We're gonna debuff, and then we're gonna use her A3 here. And uh, yeah, boom, done, 83, 50, three of the four dead, Molly survives, easy finish. And we're in, we're in top tier plat, like we're not, or top tier gold four. We're, we're not at the bottom, right? We look how close we are, and easy win. Uh, let's pick another team here, a couple, of, a double Ray. That's a, that's a Ray Ray right there. Hey, Ray Ray, sorry, shouldn't have that. Sometimes I wonder about myself. Okay, same thing. Um, see if these champions are any different. Debuff and use her A3. The best thing about that A3 is, so you're hitting and you're hitting hard. And if you're not hitting, you're locking their cooldowns. So even if that was close, maybe maybe she was gonna cut with her, with her Arbiter next. What was she gonna do? She's just A1 attack because for one round, she can't do anything. Uh, here's another one with Seeker. Um, I was actually gonna bring. I was actually I, I was gonna do this battle twice just to, to give you an idea, and I was gonna do once where I, I use her AOE and once where I use her single target, because typically to combat seekers, your best bet is to is to bring in single target nukers, kill the Trunda, kill the Arbiter, and then deal with the seeker afterwards. But I just wanted to see what the A3 would do first, and uh, never mind because yeah, that just occurred uh, again. Now you just kind of finish it up. So you can, as you can see, no problems in high level uh, plat. Not even with crazy gear. Think of her in savage gear. 
uh, think of her against these other ones, and you're gonna you're gonna absolutely destroy. So there you go, a couple of shots in the arena. I don't know if do I, I might lose this one because of my stupidity. We'll see. Maybe they're faster. Oh, we'll see. One more battle. Uh, same thing. Turn meter. Turn meter. Debuff. Attack. I might start using Stagnite just so I can auto this. <laughs> oh, there we go. So there, perfect example. Very good in the arena. Um, and and we'll handle just what I think you throw at her. My final thoughts on Alika, I, I have to say I really like her as a champion. I really like her toolkit. She smacks. You saw her. She, she was hitting so hard. I was trying to find a scenario where I could bring her in for single targeting. Um, you know, if you have a Seeker, you're going up against a Seeker, you don't want him to proc his defense up. Alika does have an A2 with a single target, ignore 50% defense. You bring her, pair her with Rotos, say, so that, or a debuffer in her so that she can take out the key the key opponent on the first round without proccing that defense proc and then come back around those sort of scenarios you, you know you could probably use her in a slow comp team force affinity is really good against trenda potentially so you know you've got someone else in a shield set you've got her on your team uh, on a go second potentially but honestly that a3 hits so hard in arena that a lot of the time i couldn't find and i'm i'm sitting i'm, I'm under 100 away from platinum and uh you know we we we, we actually got a not bot page a, i don't know what to call it a farm page whatever what's the right way to call it uh but we got then we got some actual strong teams some some reasonable teams and she was still one shotting them uh and so yeah i mean like anything you need to go first if you can't go first maybe she'd be good in that like i use candrophon maybe put her in immunity set yeah i i could i could see it probably not platinum level i think in platinum you're gonna need a lot more survivability that she's probably gonna die but um if you're not going first but you could definitely play around with it and have those options for her but and this is the huge but i can't recommend building her uh which is too bad because i think she's my favorite champion that i've ever not recommended and the reason is because she needs more books than the great library she is she's got so many books on her uh, Rand McNally called to give me a lifetime achievement award. She is, um, it, it, I don't even know what, like, I, 20 books. It's 20 books. You cannot build a champion with 20 books. It is ridiculous. You've got seven, you've got, you've got another seven, or six here, and another seven here. Especially on the A1. Are you kidding me? Um... Yeah, if you've got the resources, if you have unlimited resources, you're not worried about it, or you just really like this champion and what she can do, and you're you're willing to put that 20 books, she needs the books, right? Especially on her A3 and A2. She needs 100% here. She needs that cooldown. Well, I wouldn't say need, but that makes her kit so much stronger to have this on a two-turn cooldown. Uh, especially in dungeon, right? Where you can just keep cycling through and just keep picking people off with reckless abandon. But the only thing she's picking off with reckless abandon is, is libraries. It, it's it's it breaks her it breaks an otherwise amazing and i mean amazing champion i am in phoenix level love with alika um phoenix level love with with alika but i can't recommend building her at 20 bucks unless you just have those resources you're just you're just like f it buy a bunch of those 12 book packs or whatever the epic book packs are and then just go to town okay if you're willing to do that and you're okay with that i yeah she's she's a great champion but until her books come down. So you want to ask me what I would do to make this champion usable? Less books. Like, first off, make this 50% chance. Get rid of these three here. So it's four. It's, there's four levels of damage on her A1. Secondly, while we're on her A1, get rid of this. This hit is always critical. That triggers me. It triggers me because there's no extra. There's no critical on the other two. But these hit really hard. So you need to have them at full crit rate. So if you're building this champion and you're going to have full crit rate, who cares if the A1 is always critical? They're all always critical, right? Unless that says this will not weak hit, do that and I'm okay. Always critical cannot weak hit, but it doesn't say that. It just says it's always critical, which means if a weak hit, that doesn't proc and so who cares, right? It's stupid. It is frustratingly stupid that that's even in here. It just shows a lack of detail when building out this champion. Whoever built this champion for Plarium really really didn't show a, an actual pride and detail in the kit they were building which is you're you're a programmer 
this is your job. Show pride in it. Anyway, rant off. I'm done. So take out the, the, the three debuff chances and just put it in there so it's 50% automatically. Here, uh, yeah, uh, get that down. Take out two of the damage ones. Or make it a three turn, make it a three turn bookable to two turn cooldown, and knock out and knock out. So knock out one of the cooldowns and one of the damages. And here, uh, yeah, just just knock out a knock out a damage. Maybe start it at eighty percent or something. Knock out a couple of the damages. If this is twelve books, if this whole kit's twelve to fourteen books, I'm okay. If it's ten books, I'm ecstatic. But at twelve to fourteen books, I'm okay. I can recommend it because she's that good of a champion. But at twenty books. It's embarrassing. So yeah, get rid of that stupid always critical that just triggers me and get rid of a half these books, you know, uh, roughly. Get rid of eight to 10 of the books and she is a top tier, possibly even S tier, S -tier champion. Definitely for Faction Wars. Uh, I can see potential in Doom Tower, definitely Arena. A champion I would recommend in a lot of areas of the game. Those are my thoughts on Alika. What are yours? Do you agree, disagree? Do you think I'm crazy on either side of the spectrum? Um, and, uh, you know, what are your thoughts? Leave them in the comments down below. Also, keep in mind, I am pushing for 2,000 subs and 7,000 views a week. So if you can help me out with that, both by sharing and watching my videos and ensuring that you are subscribed, like 70% of you are not, I would be extremely appreciative. And that gives me the opportunity to give you guys gems every month as a giveaway. So I, you know, it's, it's for you guys. I get to 2,000 subs. I get more views and more money from YouTube. It's not a lot, but it's something uh, to help me build out these expensive champions. And uh, in turn, you guys get, uh, I think it's 540 gems I get to give away every month. So uh, it's a win-win. Please help me out and I will help you out. Uh, finally, of course, be kind, practice social distancing, uh, love one another with permission, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.